And welcome to another episode of a little bit of data science and scikit-learn, where this time we learn just a teeny amount of data science and a whole lot of scikit-learn. Um, so let's get started. This is my favorite part of scikit-learn. This is like one of the coolest parts about it. It's called pipelines and future unions. Um, so let's just get off and then you can sort of see why uh, I think it's so cool. Okay, so what is what is a pipeline? Uh, so a pipeline is applying a list of transformations. So we've seen estimators, we've seen meta-estimators, which take estimators to make new estimators. Uh, pipelines take a list of estimators to make a whole new estimator, and they just squish it all into one estimator. So the only parameter it takes is a list of estimators, a list of steps. Uh, now let me, let me just sort of show you what this looks like. So for example, I've got two estimators here. I've got PCA and then I've got an SBC. So I've got dimensionality reduction and then classification. Uh, I name them. You have to name them. This is part of it. I name them reduced dim and then classification. I feed them into a pipeline and ta-da, uh, I, I get the entire thing. So it collapses them both into one. It fits the PCA. It then applies a transformation from the PCA. It then fits the classifier and then applies the prediction from the classifier. And if you've got 10 transformations before you hit the classifier, we'll apply all of those sequentially. Um, so when we load our data set and we can fit in, in our pipeline and score our pipeline just as we would any estimator. Um, so it's awesome. Um, there's another way to actually make pipelines. Uh, this is using the make pipeline function. Um, it does the exact same thing. It just takes a list of um, of these like uh, classifiers. Um, it's, it's basically the the only difference. So, uh, also, I guess it kind of like makes their own names for you. Um, you can index into the pipeline steps by using uh, steps uh, as a, as a list, uh, and you can also index in as a dictionary using the named steps right here. Um, you can access attributes of all of these sub pipelines using their name and then underscore underscore the attribute. Uh, so the classifiers uh, regularization equals 10. Right. So I can set that parameter. Uh, if you're doing grid search, you use those parameters names. So reduce them, the name of PCA, underscore underscore, the number of components that you want for PCA and then the list. You can use this for random search or grid search. Um, and the same thing for the other one. One step further, you, you can even uh, specify the name of the classifier itself and try a couple different estimators. So in this case, I can try SVC and I can try logistic regression. So it's pretty cool. Um, so that, that's about it for pipelines. There's so much stuff you can do with this. I, I mean, it's so helpful when you've got like natural language and you want to do three processing steps. You want to like tokenize it. You want to remove stop words. And then you want to take it all and put it into a bag of words representation. You're going to do PCA on the bag of words representation. And then you want to throw that into um, probably not a naive phase at that point, but you know, logistic regression. Right, that's five steps. And if you were having to do that like again and again and again for train, for validation, for test, instead of all just smushing it into one, it would be very annoying. So it's really cool. Uh, feature union serves a similar purpose. Uh, feature union basically says, hey, I've got a couple of features coming from different things, and I want to include them all, sort of smush them all together. Um, looks very similar. I take estimators, I name them, I smush them all together in a feature union. So I give a list of estimators to a feature union, is what it looks like. Um, you can then fit transform, uh, or just fit and then transform, or whatever. Um, and you'll notice my shape is huge. It includes all the PCA plus all the kernel PCA, uh, but the same number of samples. Um, you can do a go ahead and do the um, uh, set params uh, the exact same way as before. You can even set specific estimators to null. So in this case, I say like, hey, I no longer want my kernel PCA. You know, then I'll only have four features. That's it. Uh, super simple. Uh, it builds on so much stuff we've done before. So if you've not seen grid search, uh, if you've not seen scoring um, uh, or how to evaluate models, um, if you've not seen the basic estimator video or the meta estimator video, this all seems really complex. But after you've built uh, so much on top of it, it's sort of like, oh yeah, I, I could have thought of that feature. Um, okay, I hope this was useful. Uh, we're, we're getting to the end. So I hope you'll join me for the last few episodes. Uh, okay, I'll see you again.